Now, Luke, we've been here since 10.15 this morning. We had a heck of a drive from Knutsford. The windscreen washers packed up and the wives spent the last 50 miles hanging out of the sunroof, picking flies off as and when they landed. We've been here for eight hours with nothing to do but buy socks. And quite frankly, it's not adequate enough. There's been no apologies, no information, Good golly, the delays with Summerbird last year were marvellous. We had bingo, community singing, we were sorry to leave and go on our holidays. What's going on is my question, quite simply. And don't fob me off with flannel. I'm in contract carpeting. And in contract carpeting, we carpet first, flannel later. So, and my wife is witnessing this. What's your name? What position do you hold in this company? And why do you not have the common courtesy to be wearing a uniform? Well? OK, my name is Victoria. The position I hold is holiday maker. I do have a uniform. It's very small, very brown. And if I was wearing it, I would do this and dance around a toadstool. Quite okay, good. No offence. I laid my carpet there without preparing my floorboard. John Appleby. We'd taken the bikes out for a spin. First time all year. Uh, it was raining, but we didn't mind. There wasn't much wind to speak of, and. It was warm enough. It was a car. Brake failure, they said. I heard screeching. The horn wailing. Myself. Screaming. I watched it smash into her. And there was nothing I could do. Oh, it must have been so awful for you. I knelt beside her on the road and watched the life slip from her eyes. She was leaving me and I couldn't follow her. I guess I've got something to tell you. I've never been very good with words. What were you saying, really? About why you like to wake up in the morning again? Because I had something to look forward to in the day again. Seeing you. In <laughs> case I wanted to ask you. Ask me what? Can you ride tandem? Well, see, you never forget. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Shirley Carver. Is it Sheila? Mm. I wasn't sure if I'd found the correct museum. <laughs> Would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. Well, I'm Keith. You're Sheila. Who's the gooseberry? <laughs> oh, I'm Victoria. I have to go in a minute. Now, if you were from Dewsbury, Victoria, you'd be the gooseberry from Dewsbury. <laughs> <laughs> when I said I was unsure as to whether I'd found the correct museum, the circumstances were these. Your note, Sheila, for which, much thanks, told me to expect a large building with stone pillars to my left on entering the city centre. Now, would I be correct in thinking you are not familiar with the workings of the internal combustion engine? Or with the workings what, Peggy? You don't drive. Oh, no. I've been shown around a tank. <laughs> also, not being cognizant with the traffic layout as seen, so to speak, from the steering wheel, it will have escaped your attention that the very first building on the left is not the Museum of Municipal Library, but the Edgar Bentley Treatment Hospital for Tropical Diseases. <laughs> now, having got that off my chest, I will just equip myself with a smallish biscuit to accompany me tea and return forthwith. He knows an elderly mother. I hope she was deaf. Rum, 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 rum. Pans doing on. That's right, give me a bit of encouragement. I said, what's this room doing full of steam? That's not what you said at all. Well, don't be so argumentative. I won't have a bath. And listen, isn't it about time we did some of the getting a proper bathroom round here? About time we did some of the a lot of things round here. Our, our Linda's got one. Oh, please don't mention that thing to me. What thing? Your big sister. Why not? Relations are strange. How come? Never you mind. Well, if you're willing to appear. Look, her grandma's got some rights, you know. How's she? It's first time I've heard about it. Well, where are you off now? To get the bath. Oh, why can't you have a bath at the proper time at night like everybody else?